Okay, guys. So today we're going to talk about quadric surfaces quick. So what a quadric surface is, is some kind of a polynomial that has x, y, and z, x squared, y squared, and z squared added together that are set equal to maybe a number. So we could have those kind of combined in various ways. Um, so I'm going to show you some of those. So one of them, uh, the first one that we're going to start with is z equals x squared plus y squared. So I've got that up on Math3D here. Uh, you can see I used an implicit surface to graph this. We could have used an explicit surface to graph this. That would also have worked. Um, here's my kind of picture that GeoGebra, or sorry, this is Math3D, uh, created for me. Uh, I did go in here and change the scale. Uh, so this is at a Z scale of one. So you can see I've got this kind of funky looking thing. Um, a thing you can play with to make these look different is turning shading on and off. Um, I tend to turn shading on and off or shading off when I've got lots of stuff going on. So here's some of my stuff. I'm going to look at this and I'm going to think to myself, okay, one way I could kind of probe what's happening here is I could think to myself, what if I set X to something, right? What would the resulting two-dimensional slice look like? So if I set x to something, I've got essentially z equals some number squared plus y squared, right? And to me, that looks like parabola. So see this kind of intersection here looks like parabola. Um, in fact, it's this parabola. So we can turn both things off. So this is what's called a parametric curve. You guys are going to learn to create these through the course of the semester. But essentially what I did was I said, okay, x is some number a right and y is kind of the thing that's left over and z is equal to a squared plus whatever y is squared and i'm using this variable t to keep track of kind of where i am along the curve so that t is going to kind of send itself along like this um, we can do a little bit of that with an animation and trust me we will um, for right now i just want you to see that parabola floating in the air Right. And if I play with my A slider, right? So from this side, you can see that it goes kind of upsy downsies, right? So what's happening there is that's moving in the X direction. And I'm seeing it's always a parabola. It's just that the height of it changes, right? So we can see that intersection here. What I'm doing is I'm moving that red plane back and forth across the blue surface and seeing that intersection is that black line. This is gonna be a really crucial thing for us to think about, is like, what are those intersections? So here's some others. I'm gonna turn the parametric curve off. I'm gonna turn the X off. I'm gonna turn Y on now. So now I'm moving Y around. You guys see those are also parabolas. So this is kind of upward pointing parabolas in both directions the X and the Y. If I turn the Y off, I might say, okay, what if I explored a Z, right? What if I sliced horizontally? And I can see that my Z slices are, well, those sure look like they're circles, don't they? And we could actually plug a number in, right? If we're plugging in A, or maybe more familiar R squared in for Z, we could see that we've got X squared plus Y squared on the other side. Yeah, that reads as circle. Um, what happens when A is negative? If I slide A down here, what's happening there? So that would look like the equation that I'm looking at right now is negative 2.6 equals X squared plus Y squared. And that doesn't have solutions, right? No matter what X and Y are, that's never going to work. So I'm seeing that the plane right, doesn't intersect with the surface. In other words, there are no x's and y's that make negative 2.6 equal to x squared plus y squared. So I got an empty intersection. That happens. Those are important. This thing here is called a paraboloid. Uh, and this one is, in fact, called a circular paraboloid. So it's called a circular paraboloid because it's parabolas in two directions and circles in the other. 
So we could make another one. So let me, let me turn that guy off. I'm going to add a new object. And this time I'm just going to add an explicit surface because you guys have seen this one. This one happen, This one's the one that starts when you start math 3D. This is the one that's always here, right? So what we're looking at is we're looking at Z equals X squared minus Y squared. All I did was change this sign in the middle from plus to a minus, and I got this different shape. So I'm going to turn off my Z slices for right now. Let's look at X slices. So if we look at X slices, see that parabola there, right there. If I turn off the X slices and turn on Y slices, ooh, that's kind of hard to see. Uh, let's switch that color a little bit. Let's make it purple. Okay, I see the parabola there. And if we change our A value, we see parabolas, parabolas, parabolas. This thing should look familiar. Um, my hope is that you guys have seen one of these before. I look like a Pringle to anybody else. Okay. Uh, this thing's also sometimes called a saddle for obvious reasons, because it kind of looks like a saddle. Uh, we are going to talk about this shape quite a bit. Uh, let's look at those Z slices again. So we've got kind of downward pointing parabolas in the x direction. Actually, upward pointing parabolas in the x direction. When we set y to something, we're talking about what happens when we vary x, right? So our purple is telling us that in the x direction, we've got upward parabolas. And our reds are telling us that in the y direction, we've got downward parabolas. So we've got up parabolas one way and down parabolas the other. Yep. That's our kind of funny shape here, our Pringle. And if we look at horizontal slices, you guys recognize what those are? That's a weird word. I'm not sure if you guys probably remember this one. It starts with an H. Hoping you ended up on hyperbola. So those are hyperbolas. And so this thing is actually called a hyperbolic paraboloid. Uh, and I spelled that wrong. Paraboloid. Nope, still spelled it wrong. Paraboloid. There you go. All right. So I've got my hyperbolic paraboloid. I know what that looks like. That's a Pringle chip. I got my circular paraboloid. What does that one look like? We scale down the Z. So if we put a point 0.1 in here, or maybe a point, let's do point 0.2 in there. And I'm going to turn shading on here so you can see that a little bit. What's that thing look like? I'm hoping that thing looks like a satellite dish to you. Uh, satellite dishes are, in fact, paraboloids for good reason. Um, they're not usually circular, though. Oftentimes, they're something else. Uh, the something else is, take two seconds to think. Pause it if you have to. Cool. They're elliptical. So if we put in, say, a couple of numbers here, like if I did 2x squared plus y, I'd get this kind of off shape. You guys see that? So that guy is a paraboloid where the cross sections, instead of being, oops, wrong cross section. Instead of being circles, they're ellipses. Um, and that holds even if I change my scaling back to normal. So see how that's a, a little ellipse in there? So that's our paraboloid family. So there's kind of circular, elliptical, and hyperbolic paraboloids. And then if we go explore some kind of other shapes. So this guy here, I'm hoping looks familiar. Uh, I expect that you guys have seen something like this. Uh, this is maybe the thing you're thinking of. Uh, these are actually really cool. So these are nuclear uh, cooling towers, sometimes called uh, draft cooling towers or hyperbolic cooling towers. Um, these are made in this, in this shape, actually. 
So you can see that if we kind of slice the Z a little bit, we'd see the shape that we were just looking at. Um, and there's reasons for that. But for us, let's just explore the shape a little bit. So if I'm exploring this shape, I'm seeing I've got X squared plus Y squared is Z squared plus one. So maybe I should like, let's add an implicit surface that we can slice with. So I'm just going to call this guy X equals A, and I'm going to add a variable slider. That I'm going to call A so I can move this thing around. I'm going to decrease the opacity on this, and I'm going to unshade that one, and I'm going to turn it green. Okay, so you can see the intersection so that's a hyperboloid again, or a hyperbola again. So these intersections are always hyperbolas. And so we're going to call this something like hyperboloid. Uh, but it's going to be important. There's a couple others. So that's the one where we've got x squared plus y squared is z squared plus one. Um, let me change that to z squared minus one quick. So see what happened? I've still got hyper hyperbolas in my intersections, right? And I could see that if I changed to the other direction, right, I'd have hyperbolas as well. And if I went up and down, I'd see circles. Right. So this shape, uh, well, these two shapes. So this one right now, you can see it's in two pieces. That's a hyperbola of two sheets. And if we change our minus one to a plus one, it becomes a hyperboloid of one sheet. Sorry, did I say I said hyperbola of sorry? They're hyperboloid of one sheet and hyperboloid of two sheets. So that's these guys. Then there's a related one, which is, well, what if you didn't, what if you didn't have this one on here? What happened there? You see that dude? Still got hyperbolic cross sections? No, it doesn't. You see? Oh, those are hyperbolic cross sections, but one of them's not. How annoying. That one right there doesn't really feel like a hyperbola. It's actually just kind of an X. Weird. But it still circles, right? Side, the other way. So sideways, it circles. Kind of backwards and forwards and left and right, it's hyperbolas. That makes me think these things are probably related. Um, let me discard that guy and put in my... So I'm just going to change this. So now I'm looking at the shape that's given by x squared plus y squared is z squared plus a. And I'm thinking, what if I change a? So right now when a is zero, I can see that this is a cone, right? This is kind of two ice cream cones kissing at the tip. If I increase a, the waist kind of pops out, right? And I get a hyperbola, hyperboloid of one sheet. And if I decrease A, the waist pinches down more, but it's already basically zero width, so it disappears, right? And I get a hyperboloid of two sheets. So these are really kind of the same thing, right? We make ourselves a little movie here. We can see the, so as I change A, right? So the value here on the right-hand side is increasing, and the hyperboloids get closer and closer together and then they kiss and then the kind of waist gets fatter and fatter right so that's the hyperboloid family so we've got the paraboloid family we've got the hyperboloid family then there's one more that's pretty obvious that we've already looked at a little bit that would be the kind of spherish family so uh we could adjust this by throwing some throwing some kind of rando numbers on here um, and you'll notice that my shape got real, real small here. And Math 3D is having a hard time with this shape. So I'm going to bump up the number of samples here, and we'll see if we can do that. Uh, and I'm going to shade it so you can see the surface a little bit. 
does that thing look like? It's not really a sphere. It's kind of stretched out and smushy. This is, if I thought about what happens if I set something, if I set one of the x, y, or z constant, right? It feels a little bit like circles, but there's those extra numbers on there. This is, in fact, an ellipsoid. So uh, these guys are hyperboloids and cones, or hyperboloid and a cone. This guy, where we're adding everything and setting it equal to a number. So we've, we're adding x squared, y squared, z squared, maybe with some numbers on them. And then we're setting it equal to a number. That's going to give us an ellipsoid. And one more thing we can make are these kind of, uh, kind of like a smear. So let me show you what I mean by that. Uh, so I'm going to turn our ellipsoid off, and I'm going to turn this implicit surface that I made z equals x squared on. You can see I've got this kind of trough thing. Yeah, that's kind of tough, right? Let me let me show you maybe the easiest one, and then we'll spend a second with this guy. So I'm going to just add another implicit surface here. And the implicit surface, oh, whoops, I already have one. And the implicit surface I want to talk about is, I just want to talk about x squared plus y squared is 1. So here we are, x squared plus y squared is 1. That should look like a circle. The difference here is that it, I haven't said what z is. So without telling you what z is, z could be anything. And so that circle gets kind of extruded along the z axis, right? So you can see I've got the circle there that I'm looking down. I end up with this thing. You guys already have a name for this. This is called a toilet paper tube or a paper towel tube, right? It's also called a cylinder. So this cylinder is circular because the cross sections are circles. If I look at this guy, z equals x squared, this guy's also a cylinder. I know it's a terrible usage of the word cylinder. I'm really sorry, but it is. And this one is parabolic in nature, right? So this is a parabolic cylinder. And this guy here was a circular cylinder. So I'm hoping today what you've got from class is you've got the idea that in order to figure out what something is, we should slice it several times. And the way we slice it is we set one of the variables equal to something. You can use uh, you can use math 3D to do that. It's pretty slick at it. So that's our, we're slicing, right? So we've got slices that we're making. And then there are kind of four major families here. So the four major families are gonna be the paraboloids, the hyperboloids, the ellipsoid slash spheres, and the cylinder family. Those are the four kind of families. Your book breaks those out in a little different way, and I do actually want you to memorize the formulas. This will make your life so much easier later. Uh, this is going to feel like something that we did for fun today, and in six weeks, I'm going to start throwing problems at you where I'm going to say, find the area underneath this surface, and you're going to need to know what that surface actually is. So uh, that's where we're going to use this. We're going to find areas underneath these things. We're going to find uh, areas in between intersections of the, or volumes in between intersections of these things. It's going to be super cool, but um, we need to be able to like look at math and make shape in order to do that effectively. So uh, I encourage some flashcards here. Make yourself some three-sided flashcards. The three sides on the flashcards should be a formula, a name, and a drawing. Those are clutch. You make little uh, pyramidal flashcards. I've seen students do a good job with it. Um, you guys can do it. Uh, do get those things in your head now because it will save your life later this semester. All right, that's it for today.